25 years ago, when I started homeschooling, an experienced homeschool mom shared some information with me that was so helpful as I was starting out. What she told me shaped the direction of our homeschool and made that journey a joy and not a burden. So what she shared with me, I want to share with you. It basically boils down to this. Homeschooling does not have to look like school at home. You have options. Just as in dining or cooking, there are different flavors or cuisines you can choose from, like Mexican and Italian and Chinese. Well, so in homeschooling, you have different styles or flavors you can choose from. What that mom did for me, and what I want to do now, is to lay out for you five main styles of homeschooling. Just like when we try to describe Mexican or Italian food, we can use broad terms to give you the general idea without going into all the variations. You know, like Mexican food is all about spicy chili peppers or tortillas or taco shells and cilantro and cumin. And Italian food, on the other hand, uses pasta and cream sauce or tomato sauce and oregano and garlic. Well, we're going to look at the five flavors of homeschooling that way, just the big picture overview, so you can get the general idea of what each one is like and see which one sounds appealing to you, which one you think will be most effective in helping you reach your goals for your children, which one resonates most with your passions and purposes for your family. So here are five flavors of homeschooling. The first flavor is traditional. I'm putting this one first because it's probably the most familiar to you. Most likely, it's the way you experienced school. You have a separate textbook or workbook for every school subject. You read the assigned information and you answer the questions. Usually, they are multiple choice or true and false or short answer. And you're expected to remember those facts until the test. Now, I like to summarize each flavor with one word. And for traditional, that word is no, because the emphasis is on knowing certain facts. Another flavor is classical. This flavor is based on something called a trivium. Now, the trivium is a three-stage process that divides the children according to their ages. The grammar stage is for ages six through about nine or 10, and that's where they're expected to absorb and memorize a lot of facts. They might memorize definitions and dates and outlines. Once the children get to about 10 to 12 years old, they move to what's called the dialectic stage. This stage emphasizes the logic and the whys behind those facts. Then when the children reach ages 13 through 18, they move to the rhetoric stage. And this is where classical education adds a persuasive use of language, being able to state an opinion and argue for it. A word to summarize the classical flavor would be think. They put a big emphasis on learning how to think. The third flavor is called the Charlotte Mason approach. It's named after a British educator who taught this way, and this is the flavor that I use. The Charlotte Mason approach uses literature and living books instead of textbooks. Now, what's a living book? I often get asked that question. It's a book that is written in literary style and it makes the subject come alive. It's different from a textbook in that a textbook usually gives you the dry facts, but a living book touches your emotion and fires your imagination and you live with the character in the story, as it were. Then, instead of asking questions over what you read in the book, we invite the child to tell the story back in his own words. The younger children do that just with their mouths. They tell it orally. The older children write down their narrations as written compositions. The whole thing with Charlotte Mason is that it emphasizes those living ideas rather than just dry facts. Another component of a Charlotte Mason flavor is that you do a wide variety of subjects. 
Charlotte emphasized giving the children a broad curriculum. So you do picture study and music study and nature study and poetry and handcrafts and art, as well as the usual history and geography, Bible, science, math, language arts. But you don't do everything every day. You spread it out over the week. If I were to summarize the Charlotte Mason approach in one word, it would be the word grow. For that's the goal of education. We learn to grow as a person. The fourth flavor is called unit studies. Now this flavor usually takes one theme and tries to arrange all the school subjects around that common theme. So if your theme was ancient Egypt, you might study deserts for science. And for math, you might learn how to find the area of a pyramid. And you would assign spelling words like pyramid and pharaoh. You would also do a lot of hands-on projects. So you might create a paper mache pharaoh mask, or build a pyramid out of sugar cubes, or you might create a lap book or do some notebooking, a lot of cutting and pasting, those types of things. My friends who use the unit studies flavor say that children are usually very active, and unit studies keep them moving, keep them active, and have them learn as they are moving. If I were to summarize unit studies in one word, that word would be do. Because unit studies are all about learning by doing. Then the last flavor that we'll talk about is called unschooling. Usually, unschooling is more child-directed. So if Johnny is interested in race cars, you feed that interest and give him as many resources as you can find to help him learn all about race cars. When that interest changes to, say, butterflies, then you feed that interest. There isn't usually a set curriculum or a set agenda because you never know what the child might be interested in next or how long that interest will last. As one mom described it to me, she asks her child, what do you want to learn about today? And when the child tells her, she says, good, go figure it out. If I were to describe unschooling in one word, that word would be live, because with unschooling, you learn through living. So that's the quick overview of the five flavors. Now let's take one more pass through them, and I want to describe what each one might look like in practice in your home. For this lesson, let's choose a random topic. Let's say we're studying bagpipes, all right? How would each flavor approach learning about bagpipes? And once again, we're going to paint with broad strokes, but this should give you a starting point. If you were using the traditional flavor to study bagpipes, your student would probably read that section in a textbook and then answer questions designed to make sure he can recognize a picture of a bagpipe, that he knows it's a musical instrument, and that it's from Scotland. And then he would be expected to remember that information until the test. If you were studying bagpipes using a classical flavor, you would make sure you covered those same facts, but then you might customize the lesson depending on where your child is on that trivium. For example, your younger ones who are in the grammar stage might memorize the definition of a bagpipe and memorize the time period in which it was invented. Your middle students, who are in the dialectic stage, might be assigned to research how a bagpipe works and then explain it to you logically, step by step. Then your older students, who are in that rhetoric stage, might be assigned to compare and contrast a bagpipe with another instrument, maybe the Old Testament instrument called the sackbut, and then determine which one would be more difficult to play and why. They would need to state their opinion and defend it. In a Charlotte Mason approach, you would probably read a story about a family living in Scotland who used a bagpipe, or maybe the story of the man who first invented the bagpipe. And then we would have the students retell the story in their own words. Again, that narration could be oral or it could be written for the older children as their composition exercise. The children would also find Scotland on the globe when it came up in the story. 
and then any time period or dates that they encountered in their reading, they would enter into their book of centuries. And as they flipped open to that page for that century, they would see all the other entries that they had already put in from past readings. And they would start making those mental connections about what else was happening in the world during that time period. With a unit studies flavor, the students might get some paper towel tubes and trash bags and make a pretend bagpipe. They could wear a plaid skirt to represent a kilt and march around the house pretending to play their bagpipes. They might also do some kind of notebooking page that involved cutting and pasting or folding. And you would try to tie your other school subjects, like science and math and language arts, into this theme of bagpipes. Maybe you would study how air can create sound as it moves for science. Or for math, you could calculate how many cubic inches of air can fit in the various sized bagpipes. Language arts might include spelling words that relate to Scotland and musical instruments. If you were using the unschooling flavor, you would get a bagpipe and figure out how to play it. So now that you have a broad idea of what each flavor is like, let's see if we can figure out which one might be the best fit for you and your family. To answer that question, you need to think about your values, your needs, your goals. What's important to you? What do you like? What don't you like? For example, if you don't like garlic, you probably won't like to eat Italian. And if you don't like rice, you probably won't like Chinese food. So grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and let's do a little exercise designed to help you zero in on the flavor or flavors that might be a good fit for you and your family. You can use a mixture of more than one flavor. I'm going to read some descriptions. Some of them will apply to you, and some of them won't. Listen to each statement and decide if it describes you. If it does, then write down the letter or letters that will appear beside it. When you're done, you'll be able to see which letter you've written down the most, and that will tell you which flavor or flavors might be a good fit for you. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. If you are concerned about keeping lockstep with the local school system, then write down a T. Perhaps you're taking your kids out of the school system this year to homeschool, but you know you will be putting the kids back in next year, and you want to make that re-entry as smooth as possible. That's what I mean by keeping lockstep. If that's a goal of yours, if that's a priority, then write down that T. If you don't necessarily like to plan, you prefer to be spontaneous. That's just how your family rolls best. Write down an N. If you place great emphasis on having the facts memorized, having them right at the tip of your mind and ready to use, if that's true of you, write down T and C. Those two approaches place great emphasis on memorizing facts. If you love hands-on projects and activities, Hobby Lobby is your favorite store, and you love working on things with your hands, write down a U. If you think the teacher should be the fountainhead of all knowledge, this would be similar to the way many of us were educated, where the teacher tells us what is important to know and what isn't and answers all of our questions. If that's the model that you think would work best for your home school, then write down T, C, and U. If you want your home school to be rigorous and challenging, those are the two words you want to describe your home school. Write down a C. If you don't want to be different, let me explain. Some of these flavors are more well-known than others, even among the homeschool community. So people say to you, oh, you're homeschooling? What curriculum do you use? And if it's not an approach that they're familiar with, you might be called on to explain it a little more often. If you don't want to have to explain what you're doing all the time, then write down T, C, and U. Those flavors are probably the most well-known. 
If you love the idea of learning from great literature and books that make the subject come alive, write down an L. If you want to use natural and gentle methods, rather than rigorous and challenging, natural and gentle, but still holding a high standard, write down L. If you like having the child decide what to learn and when, that will just work best for your family right now, then write down N. If you want to linger with art and nature and handcrafts and music, not just rush over them or skim over them, but linger with them, then write down L and N. If you want to teach the way you were taught, most likely, you don't want to have to learn a whole new way of teaching and put forth the effort to do something different, then write down T. If you believe that true education comes from a personal relation with what's being studied, not just recognizing a name or a term on the test, but relating to it in a personal way, then write down L and N. If you want your student to learn how to self-educate, to be able to teach himself about almost anything for the rest of his life, write down L and N. If you live and die by standardized test scores, maybe you don't want to live and die by standardized test scores, but I've talked to some parents that their privilege of continuing homeschooling depends on how well their children do on standardized tests. So if that's a high priority for you, write down T and C. If you want to teach all your children together for as many subjects as possible, write down L and U. Those two approaches make it easy to combine grade levels for a lot of the lessons. If, on the other hand, it would work better for you and your family to have each child on his or her own separate track, then write down T, C, and N. Now you can put down your pencil and rest your hand for a moment. The rest of these statements will be true of all of the flavors. If you want something that will work for a special needs child, you can use any of the flavors. You will need to tweak them, of course, but any of the flavors will work. If you want something that will work well for a large family, something you can use with all 17 of your children, any of the flavors can work for a large family. If you need something that will work well for an only child, again, you can use any of the flavors. Perhaps you have another job and you need something that you can tuck around your work schedule. You can do that with any of the flavors. Maybe you'll be bringing in the help of your spouse or grandparents to teach some of the lessons and you need something you can hand off to those other teachers. Well, any of the flavors will work for that. I often get asked, which flavor will best prepare my child for college? The answer is any of them. I know college graduates who were homeschooled with each of those five flavors. But perhaps we should be asking, which flavor will best prepare my child for life? Because life is much longer than four years of college. And again, any of the flavors will do. And if you want to emphasize good character development and biblical discipleship, again, you can use any of the flavors as you work to accomplish that goal. Now, as you can see, choosing a homeschool flavor is not a matter of right and wrong. All of them are viable options. All of them have been used successfully to educate children. This is a matter of personal preference. So take a look at your paper. Which letter did you write down the most times? If you see more T's on your paper than any other letter, you would probably be most comfortable using the traditional flavor. If you see mostly C's, then you would be most comfortable with classical. L stands for the Charlotte Mason flavor, U stands for the unit studies flavor, and N stands for unschooling. Now, if you look at your paper and you see two letters that are almost equal in prominence, you might want to do a mixture of those two flavors, pulling some aspects from one and some methods from the other. You might say, I want to teach these subjects with this flavor 
and these subjects with that flavor. You can do that. You have that freedom. One of the beauties of homeschooling is that you can customize your children's education specially for them. So hopefully, you now have a pretty good idea of which homeschool flavor will be a good fit for you and your family. One of the great things about knowing your favorite flavor is that it makes the process of choosing curriculum much simpler because different publishers cater to the different flavors of homeschooling. So if you know which flavor you prefer, you can narrow your search to the publishers who specialize in curriculum for your flavor. We have a free download available that summarizes what we have covered, including all of those if you statements. And on the back page, it gives a list of curriculum publishers who cater to the various flavors. And some even cater to certain mixtures of flavors. Just go to simplycm.com slash workshop five flavors and you'll find a link to that handout. Now let me give you some tips for when you visit those publishers to get your curriculum. You can go about getting your curriculum in three ways. I like to think of it like a pepperoni pizza. Let's say you wanted to have pepperoni pizza for supper tonight. There are basically three ways you could go about it. You could grab a ready-to-go pizza. Take it home, eat it, you're good to go. It's not as customized as you might prefer, but it's quick and easy. And some curriculum is like that. We call it curriculum in a box. With some publishers, you can say, I want third grade and fifth grade, please. And they'll send you a box with everything that you need for each of those two grades. Just do what's in the box. It's not as customized, but it's quick and easy, and it might be a good fit for you during this season of life. A second way that you could make a pepperoni pizza is to go to the store and say, I want this crust and that sauce and this cheese and that pepperoni and, oh, add some oregano and some Parmesan. And then you take all those components home and put them together to make your pizza. And you can do that with curriculum, too. You can say, I want this math and that science and this history and that language arts. Oh, and add in this art and take it all home and put it together for your curriculum. The third way to make your pizza is to grow your own wheat and grind it to make your own flour for the crust. You can grow your own tomatoes and crush them to make the sauce. You can raise your own pig and butcher it for the pepperoni. You, you get the idea. And you can take that approach to your curriculum, too. You could write your own. And some of you are thinking, really? And others of you are thinking, really? Well, now you know whether that might be a good fit for your family. Just remember, you have options. Whatever curriculum you choose, let me encourage you to make sure you do one thing with it. Teach the child. Don't just teach the curriculum. Make that curriculum your servant. Don't let it become your master. Just because the curriculum might say to spend two weeks on the plus fives, that doesn't mean you have to spend two weeks on the plus fives. Think about your child. You are teaching your child. You're not just teaching the curriculum. Maybe he already knows the plus fives and he will be bored to tears if you spend two weeks on them. Or maybe he needs longer than two weeks to learn the plus fives. You know your child best. Use curriculum as a tool to help you teach your individual child. You want to feed your child's hunger for knowledge, not squelch it. Our children are born with an innate sense of curiosity, and too often we school that out of them. But with the right flavor for your family and a focus on the child, not just the curriculum, you can make your homeschool a delightful place of learning and growing. Be sure to take a look at the helpful resources waiting for you at simplycm.com slash workshop five flavors. And if you would like to learn more about why I chose the Charlotte Mason flavor, check out the video I made called 
why I chose the Charlotte Mason method. I'll leave a link in the show notes. Thanks for joining me.